Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to go over combinatorial proofs. I'm going to tell you what they are and why they're useful. So a combinatorial proof, in essence, is you prove that two things are equal to each other, uh, typically for the purposes of counting, right? So you'll be given this is equal to that, and somebody say, prove that to me, right? And now the first question you may ask yourself is why? Why do I have to show that this is equal to that, right? What's, what's the point in doing that, right? Well, I'm going to show you that with an example, which we are going to prove, right? So what if somebody wanted you to sum the first n positive integers, right? So when I say that, I mean 1 plus 2 plus 3, that is not a 3, plus 3 plus dot 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 plus n, right? So the first n positive integers, where n is also a positive integer. Now, you can do that. I know you can, right? It's just addition. You can even use a calculator. But nobody wants to do that, right? Because what if n is a million? You don't want to add a million terms, right? That's gonna that's just gonna be terrible, right? But what if I told you that this is also equal to n times n plus one divided by two? Now you shouldn't just trust me, I should have to prove this to you, and I will prove this to you, right? But if I can show that these two things are equal, clearly doing the right hand side is easier, right? On the left hand side, you could have a million terms, right? You could have, you have n amount of terms. But on the right hand side, you just have three, right? You have n times n plus one, and then you divide that by two. And that is way easier than doing the left hand side. So that's why combinatorial proofs are nice, because if you can show that doing something hard is equal to doing something easy, if you can prove that they're the same thing, then just always do the easy thing, because why waste time doing the hard thing, right? So when we do combinatorial proofs, right, when we're given this is equal to that, the first thing we need to do is pose a counting question, right? And the reason why we're going to pose a counting question is because if we can show that the left and right hand sides both answer that question and do in fact count the same thing, then they have to be equal, right? There's, there's no way they can answer the same question and not be equal. So the question I'm going to pose, right, is what? What is the sum of the first n positive integers, right? Very simple question. Now, often in my experience, because I haven't done anything crazy, is that one expression will be a lot easier to answer than the other expression, right? So in this case, the left-hand side is clearly a lot easier to show the proof for, right? So my proof, this is where the proof starts. I'll say answer one, right? And I'll say clearly, clearly we can find the sum. We can find the sum by adding the first n positive integers first n positive integers as demonstrated it's a big word as demonstrated on the left of the equality right and now that was a super easy proof because it's obvious how can i find the sum well i'll just sum them right anyway now let's look at answer two, because the right hand side isn't so obvious, right? How is that the sum of the first n integers, right? I'm going to show you something and then I'm going to write the proof, right? So imagine I have written out one plus two plus three plus dot 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 plus n, right? <clears throat> Now imagine I write that again, right? And I can write it in reverse order because of associativity, right? And so when I say associativity, I mean one plus two is equal to two plus one, right? So one plus two plus three plus dot 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 n is equal to n plus n minus one plus n minus two plus dot 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 plus one, right? It's the same thing. And now what if I added these two sums together, right? Well, what is n plus 1? Well, that's just n plus 1. What is n minus 1 plus 2? That is also n plus 1. n minus 2 plus 3, n plus 1, plus dot dot dot, plus what's n plus 1? It's n plus 1, right? So as you could see, 
For each term, when we add them together, we get n plus 1. And how many times do we get n plus 1? We get it n times, right? There are n terms here. And why are there n terms? Because there's, well, there's n terms here. And then there's n terms here, right? So we're getting n plus 1 n times, right? And that came from adding these two things together, right? But we only want one of them, right? We only want, like, what this sum is equal to, for example, right? So. Considering that I've added these two things to, to each other, right? I've added what I wanted to itself. I need to divide two to get just the one part that I want, right? So n plus one, n times, right? That's equal to n plus one times n, right? But again, that comes from adding both of these things together, all these n terms, the first n positive n integers twice, but I only want it once. So I'll just divide by two. And now is it making sense? Do you see why the right-hand side is equal to the first n positive integers? I just showed it with this example. I'm going to write it out formally now. Um, but that's, I mean, I think that's pretty cool. I hope you think it's cool too. Um, and now that we know that these things are true, it's way easier to do n plus 1 times n over 2, right? So now let's write this out formally, right? So hold on. Let me, let me erase all of this nonsense in our way. Um, if you still did not really understand where that all came from, I mean, feel free to go back and like rewind or pause and convince yourself, right? But I'm going to write it out formally, right? So I'll say answer to, answer to. How can I write this? We're figuring this out on the spot, by the way. So answer to. Um, I'm going to say let S1 be the sum of the first n positive integers and I'll say uh, written out right and when I say written out I just mean like the 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 yeah and I'm going to say let s2 be the sum of the first oh, by the way a little English lesson um, you shouldn't end a sentence in a preposition that's what I did written out I shouldn't have done that just wanted to throw that in there. Let S2 be the sum of the first n positive integers. It should just say written. Written in reverse order, right? And maybe that's not clear, so I'll write in parentheses what that means. I'll say n plus n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus 2 plus 1, right? Any math professor is going to know what I mean when I write that. And I'm going to say, I'm going to write down what I said earlier, by associativity, by associativity, S1 is equal to, F, that is not an S, S1 is equal to S2. I got ahead of myself. Now, when we add S2 to S1, we get n terms equal to n plus 1. And see, I don't have to really carefully explain it like I did when I was teaching it, because if somebody's grading this, they're, they're going to know what I mean. So now when we add s2 to s1, we get n terms equal to n plus 1. This new sum s1 plus s2 clearly equals n plus 1 times n, right? Now let me scroll down a little bit. So it clearly equals n plus 1 times n. But we only want s1. Since we know s1 equals s2, we can divide by 2 to get, to get f1. Hence, n plus 1 times n over 2. And we get the sum of the first 
n positive integers, right? I, I mean, guys, I think that this is pretty cool. I think it's awesome that this equality is true, right? Um, but we're not done with the proof yet, right? So we showed answer one. We'll answer our question. What is the sum of the first n positive integers? And answer two also answers it. So now how am I going to finish it off? I'm going to say, since the left and right sides of the equality count the same thing, count the same thing, they must be equal. And that is the end of our combinatorial proof. Now, in my opinion, combinatorial proofs become way more fun and way more interesting when you learn about these things called binomial coefficients, which we're going to talk about eventually. We'll get there. Um, I think they get way more interesting because you could tell a fun little story with them and show like, hey, look, we kind of the same thing, right? I think when we get to binomial efficients and start talking about combinatorial proofs with that, I might use like a baseball team kind of example that I remember using on a test when I took discrete math class because I thought it was clever and I got a 100 on it. So there you go. But if you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you learned something.